What's the connection between boxing and classical music? Why do boxing movies contrast violence with violins? In this video, Violence vs. Violins, I'll answer some of these burning questions by looking at the role of classical music in the boxing genre. I'll be mainly focusing on the 1939 film Golden Boy. It's about 20-year-old Italian-American Joe Bonaparte, a violin prodigy who switches career goals from virtuoso to prizefighter in hopes of actually, you know, making money. Along the way, he disappoints his overly emotional father, Prizefighters are not for you! I want to do what I want! falls in love with his manager's girlfriend, and enters into business with a well-connected but less than scrupulous gangster. I like to buy a piece of you. I don't care for no profit. In Golden Boy, classical music symbolizes three different conflicts. Body versus soul, violence versus art, and Italian versus Italian-American identity. I'll be looking at moments where these three dichotomies also apply to Martin Scorsese's Raging Bull and Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather Part II. Let's start with body versus soul. In his essay, Body and Soul, author, professor, and film scholar Ledra Grindon argues that boxing films all follow the same basic master plot. These shared plot points are what make boxing movies into a recognizable genre. Grindon acknowledges that a single film can't hold all ten moves, but taken together, these ten moves repetition throughout different boxing films eventually forms one giant boxing genre myth. And one key part of this boxing myth is the body versus soul conflict. You don't need me to tell you that the drama of boxing comes from watching the boxer endure constant physical pain. But while boxing requires a strong body, age and injuries eventually take that strength away. Grindon notes that the dramatic question at the heart of the boxer's narrative is this, and I quote, Can he overcome the deterioration of the body by cultivating his soul? Okay, all this body-soul stuff is all well and good, but where do the violins come in? In Golden Boy, the film positions violin as salvation for Joe's slowly degrading soul, while boxing is shown as a temptation that could bring him money, but never real happiness. I've seen you get hard-shelled and tough. You shouldn't be in the ring, Joe. You belong in your home with your violin. Unfortunately for Joe, the longer he boxes, the more he injures his hands, and the more difficult it becomes for him to play the violin. Try again, Joe. What's the use? Interestingly, Joe Bonaparte's violin obsession actually has a real-life parallel. Grindon argues Golden Boy is actually a meta-reference to Joe Lewis, a real-life boxing champion who famously snuck out to the boxing ring by telling his mom he was going to violin lessons, or so the story goes. This argument would make Golden Boy a whitewashed version of Joe Lewis's story. In Golden Boy, the fictional Joe is white. The fictional black boxer in Golden Boy, whose name is Chocolate Drop, gets very little backstory before he is accidentally killed by Joe Bonaparte. But in real life, Joe Lewis was actually a boxing legend. In Golden Boy, none of the black actors are even listed in the credits. Okay, that side note seemed important, but now it's over and let's get back to the body versus soul thing. So, when Joe Bonaparte kills Chocolate Drop in the ring, Joe also breaks his hand. Take it easy. What's the matter? Broke? Yeah, it's broke. No wonder it's broke, darling, how you gave it to him, not to my enemies. Problematically, the narrative lens of Golden Boy seems much more concerned with Joe's broken hand than with his opponent's untimely death. Despite the film's badly misplaced priorities, Joe's broken hand symbolizes the point of no return for his deteriorating body. Joe gives up boxing for good that night, but by breaking his hand, he also ruins his chance at saving his soul via the violin. In Golden Boy, the violin is quite literally the symbol of the body versus soul conflict. Classical music in the boxing genre also symbolizes a second conflict, the tension between violence versus art. Because Golden Boy was made in 1939, the production code kept the film from showing any particularly graphic violence. Instead, Golden Boy resorts to moralizing dialogue, usually delivered by Joe Bonaparte's father. Who's winning? What's the difference? Who's the winner? It's a terrible to see. But the violence versus art conflict isn't confined to Golden Boy. 
let's take a moment and re-examine the opening moments of Raging Bull. It's noteworthy that Scorsese picks this moment to introduce us to the world of Jake LaMotta. The classical music stands out to viewers of the film because it feels so out of place. Instead of contrasting violence versus art using diegetic music like Joe's performance in Golden Boy, Scorsese instead employs extra diegetic classical music. And before you just write off this classical music as simply part of the soundtrack, I'd like to point out another scene where the contrast between classical music and violence is even more pronounced. In this scene, as the music gets louder, the sound of fighting slowly falls silent until we hear beautiful music instead of the angry crowd. At this moment, art, in the form of classical music, forces us to take a step back from the action and reflect on the violence taking place on screen. In Raging Bull, classical music brings the contrast between art and violence to the surface and gives the viewers some narrative distance from the violent events in the film. Lastly, the final boxing genre conflict that classical music brings to the forefront is the clash between Italian and Italian-American identities. In Golden Boy, Joe's family sings Italian music together as a family. Even when Joe plays the violin, his father asks him to play music by the Italian composer Paganini. But Joe refuses. The part violin. What shall I play? Uh, play uh, Paganini variations. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Instead, the theme that Golden Boy uses to represent Joe musically, both in the soundtrack and the diegetic music, is Brahms' Lullaby, a piece by a German composer. It's also well known in America. I immediately recognized the piece when I heard it because my mom used to sing it to me when I was little. So while classical music is associating Joe's father with Italy, it associates Joe with non-Italian music. Outside the boxing genre, The Godfather Part II also uses orchestral music to show Italian-American characters struggling to balance their Italian identity with an American social milieu that they never quite seem to belong to. Take a look at this moment, where a very drunk Frank Pentangeli attempts to lead an American band in a rousing Italian song. Yes, you heard that right. That is Pop Goes the Weasel. Not only is it insulting Frank, the band is actually playing a children's rhyme with English origins, once again marginalizing Italian identity. In both Golden Boy and Godfather Part II, classical music highlights the crisis of identity facing Italian Americans. In this video, we've looked at classical music in boxing films and identified three core conflicts, body versus soul, violence versus art, and Italian versus Italian American cultural identities. But this interpretation of violence versus violins may actually create more questions than we started with. The violence versus art contrast also brings up larger discussions about the role of violence in art. Questions like, when does violence become gratuitous or exploitative? It also brings up the question of Italian identity. What role did music play in creating a picturesque view of Italy in, say, silent films, like The Italian? While these three conflicts give us a framework for understanding the role of music in the boxing genre and Italian-American films more generally, there's always an opportunity to dig deeper. Hopefully, though, this gives you a starting place to launch your investigation into violence and violins in the boxing genre.